So today we're going to be installing the Airlift 1000 HD, and this is gonna go into my 2013 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon with a four inch Mopar lift. Now this specific bag and spec is for this specific spring. This spring is four inches taller than the standard, and it is very similar to that of which you find on the Dodge Ram 1500, which this bag was intended for originally. Uh, the installation is pretty easy from what it seems so far. Don't do this because obviously use jack stands. The instructions tell you how to do it. Um, it comes with the pucks, the hoses, and all the equipment. I had it all laid out here, but while I was taking the first video for this, my phone ran out of storage space because, you know, technology. Um, but it comes with all the fittings. And what I did was I took the hose and I slid one of these little clips onto the hose. I fed this barbed end into it and then slid the clip over so it would pin the hose onto it so that my hose has this fitting at the end which screws onto the top of the bag. I took the bag and the instructions show you step by step beautifully how to do this. It's actually really well done instructions um, on every bit of the install. So if you have any questions you can reference this. Um, this is actually the most important part, which is the bags themselves come with a little plastic cap. And this cap actually is just used for, you unscrew the cap and then compress the rear of the bag. I'll kind of show you this on the floor because I'll have something to press against. And then you just roll it up like this and then put the top back on and that will make the bag deflated and it'll go in easier at that rate. Uh, which I've already done one bag and I'll show you how I got to where I am. They indicate to put it in from the bottom and go up. The bottom has much smaller spacing between the coils of the spring. I went to about the fourth one here, fed it back up in and then just pulled the bottom in and pushed it back down. Now compressing it like that, if you can make it into the hot dog bun thing, cool. Mine didn't really do that. It stayed semi-flat, which made it a little bit wider. So it was a little bit tight going in, but it wasn't bad. It took literally about a minute and a half or two minutes in total to put one bag in. Um, <clears throat> and then there are some different ways that you can route the hoses so that they're both in um, tandem, so to speak, so that both bags are filling at the same rate. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna keep them independent so that I can use this as a leveling function for my Jeep if I'm ever parked on or camping on a surface that isn't level. I can actually deflate a bag and inflate a bag to compensate the side sway of the rear of the Jeep, which is where the sleeping end of that happens. So um, I'm gonna keep it that way and I'll show you what I've done so far. And also uh, a friend of mine, Nick, made a comment. My brother is actually the spokesperson for Airlift. Who knew? Not really, but he looks just like that. Um, and if you haven't seen his channel, it's MCB Matthew Crow Burke. And Crow, it seems like it was like a manifest thing. Like you give him the middle name and then he's going to be a bird carver. And sure enough, he is. He's probably one of the most uh, brilliant carvers I've ever seen. He's actually exquisite in his detail and he's uh, really creative. So if you haven't seen that, you should go check out his channel, MCB Woodworks uh, on YouTube. And so what I've done over here, ooh, as I knock my Jeep off its stand, um, I've pushed the bag up through this center one here. Uh, it still has the cap on it. So it's, see, it's still kind of crinkled up. And what I did with the hose is I didn't cut the hose yet because I don't know exactly how long it's going to be to route it. So I just fed it up here through this side frame rail with that brass fitting on the top of it so that I wouldn't have to do all that once I got under here. And then I pushed the hose out over the edge here until I had enough slack. And then with my hand just tucked up and around until it came down through the top of that hole in the top. Now I have to slide the puck over this so that the stem won't get damaged and that will go up like so and then I'll put it on the top of the bag screw it in and then let the bag uh, reinflate essentially and then route this hose all the way to the back of the vehicle I'll probably route it over here next to the the trailer uh, attachment or the wiring harness but that is how you do it. It's that easy. It's super, super simple. Obviously the last step of putting the, the valve at the end is just as easy as putting the one on there. You just slide the barbed brass fitting with a Schrader valve on it 
onto here, put the little spring, well, put the spring clip on the hose, put the barb in, and then put the different screws, or nuts rather, on there that will hold it to a plate. Um, and then inflate the bags. <laughs> it's really, really easy. Um, some other things just to note, I have upgraded the sway bar in the rear of the vehicle to a Hellwig sway bar. From the side to side rock that you get in the vehicle, this made an enormous difference from the OE one. It's probably about, um, I would say it's about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more um, in thickness, three eighths, than the OE one. It's a lot thicker and has a lot more resistance to sway in the rear. And with a lot of weight in the rear of the vehicle, that's super helpful. Also note that if you have the four inch lift and you've put in those metal spacers, that bolt right there actually interferes with that plate. And I just noticed that about a week ago. So I'm actually gonna cut the a notch out of that since the bump stop actually hits the back facing of it and that front side isn't even needed it's going to notch that out you could turn the bolt around uh, i don't think it's necessary it just shouldn't interfere so i'm just going to notch that out but yeah all things considered that's pretty much the entire install i'll uh, give a pause here and then uh pick it back up when i've got the very last couple things on there putting together so you can see the final project and then i'll air it up so you can see how much lift it achieves So all things considered, the installation probably took about 20 minutes or 30 minutes, um, compressing the bags, running the hoses and everything. The longest part, and I guess the only negative that I have about this is that the actual end point valves, which have to be anchored to something hard so you can push a um, inflator onto them, there's no bracket. Even just a small L piece of metal with two holes punched in it to put these through would have been really nice. Uh, I'm huge into fabrication and I have tons of aluminum uh, angles and not, these ones are just too small. These ones are a little bit too small. The next size up I have is way too thick and too big. Um, it's quarantine time. So finding that specific piece and then manufacturing not only the two holes for the valves um, and then somehow manufacturing another set of holes to mount it to the bumper and then the hardware to mount it to the bumper. I just don't have that. So what I did is, this is all the OEM uh, trailer hitch. And this snaps up into this, not snaps, but kind of rubberized, clips itself in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the lower end of these tabs uh, to drill the holes. And I'll have the stems actually stick out further so that I can actually fill it around that um and then if i need to if i need more space i can just pull this down it doesn't it doesn't take any effort to pull this down so i'm gonna actually punch two holes on either side of that tab because it's the only tab that i have for this uh, and then install these from there but i'll do that and then show you that so this is my little cheap slime air compressor i've used for years it works uh, it hasn't failed me yet but i do have to replace it so anyone has any good recommendations on via air or ARB compressors. I know they're both uh, fairly pricey, but I'm not really a big fan of spending too much money. So if there's an alternative option that has pretty much the same hardware, um, is at a cheaper price point, I'm so, so if you know of any, comment down below and let me know about it. So I just inflated one side. Um, you can see the compression of the bag inside there. It's nice and, and compressed. And the other one's still pretty limp because they haven't filled that one. Uh, I was able to put those on this tab here and still use that trailer hitch tab um, for the connector and for both of the fill lines on that. I only filled one size. I'm going to do a measurement. I'll get a tape measure and uh, see what we got for height on one side versus the other. And once we do both sides, we'll probably get a little bit more proper, but... From the top of the tread bar to the bottom of that, you're about eight inches. Should sit about probably an inch taller on this side, but let's see what we got. Got about a half inch of, oh, oh, where'd I go? There we go. And I've actually about an inch so far, that's, that's, that's seven inches. So that can be an inch just putting it at 50 PSI, and it'll probably help the bottoming out function of it as well. So I'm gonna inflate the other side and we'll see how that looks. So now with both bags filled, uh, the passenger side sits at about eight and a half inches as well as the driver's side. So it gave me about an inch and a half of um, rebound from the squat. 
which leveled the vehicle out quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna do probably another video in about a two week period where I'll just kind of review what PSI I'm running on the roadways. Um, I drive mostly city highway uh, mixed and then an enormous amount this time of year on the sand. I'm in the southeastern part of North Carolina uh, where we're allowed to drive on a lot of beaches and sand dune areas. So most of my off-roading isn't rock crawling anymore. We're back when I lived in Maine, that's all it was, is mountain climbing with rocks and my old Rubicon, which was great for that. This, the wide tires and the long wheelbase really is great for sand. I love it. Um, but the bounciness that you get from these springs on the highway sucks and the squat from the weight sucks. So this should uh, really level that function of it out, but still let me go down to five PSI and have that nice bounce and cushion out on the dunes as it's more like a long winded washboard once you get out there. Um, so I'll give you a review of how it works on and off road and what PSIs I'm using so you can kind of see what you think about it uh, from that perspective. Uh, and I'll do a full review again about a week or two. Hope you enjoyed, if you like it, uh, hit the thumbs up and comment like and subscribe you know all that silly stuff and also really curious what alternatives to via air and via air whatever it is and arb are there that are much cheaper uh, i feel like a lot of brands that are in this category tend to overprice themselves because a lot of folks have a lot of money in this category and i'm not that person i don't spend money on stupid things uh, I think there's a lot of tech that people buy for their Jeeps that's way overpriced and novelty and not necessary, uh, especially for the frequency of use. Uh, an air compressor, I do want to be high quality, but eh, I don't think that the ARB price point is proper for what they're selling, as well as the Via Air at theirs is really much better price point, but I don't know quality-wise or anything like that. So if you have any suggestions, leave them down below in the comments.